Good morning! What's going on everybody? Back here with another video. Today, as you saw, I just did a cold start on the CRX. That would be the second or third cold start uh, that this car has gone through. If you guys follow the build, it's an all wheel drive stroker, soon to be nitrous CRX. Just got it running on Thursday, today is Monday. And uh, if you're new to building engines and even if you're not like on a professional scale, if you're out of the garage, there's always a few things that I like to do personally. I'm by no ways a professional, just let me get that straight. straight. But there are precautions that you can take when doing things at your house that make the break-in process of the engine a lot safer and you can ensure that you haven't had any hiccups in the building process and that when you do have a fresh engine, you can break it in or get the first few heat cycles on the engine correctly. Starting off, uh, if you didn't see the video from the first startup, then I'll just let you know right now, before you start a new engine that you've been working on, it's good to take the spark plugs out, take the fuel, the fuel delivery system off of the car in our case we took the spark plugs out and disconnected the fuse for the fuel pump and we primed it over for about 30 seconds to build oil pressure you want to do this so there's you know sufficient fluid within the bearings the cams every moving part within the engine and by taking the spark plugs out you were you take away from the equation the compression that's within the combustion chamber that would in turn put a load on the bearing itself before it got the proper uh, lubrication using your uh, you know oil pump and everything a good thing to have is as you can see right there a little oil gauge mine goes from 0 to 100 which is normally what engines run especially Honda motors you'll get anywhere from like 70 to 90 psi from a cold start and then when it, once it's idling obviously uh, already warmed up the oil pressure will drop until you give it throttle and whatnot but uh, it's always good to have an oil pressure gauge because you can check and make sure that the, your, your engine is building proper oil pressure. Or if one day maybe your oil pressure drops, you know to turn off your car immediately and inspect what the issue is. Now the CRX actually didn't have an alternator belt on the car yet. I had one here at the house. It wasn't the right size. Then I went to Advanced Auto Parts. I bought an alternator belt. If you guys follow me on Instagram, I was on Instagram Live doing that the other day. Um, I bought an alternator belt specifically for the crank pulley and the alternator that I have, which is both out of an Acura Integra, which is essentially what this B-Series is. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know if they gave me the wrong part number or it was just one off or something. The alternator belt was way too small with the alternator pulled all the way in. So I'm going to have to go to the parts store soon and get another alternator belt. Before we leave, I want to do another heat cycle on the motor right at the start of this video. I did a little startup. I just wanted to hear the cold startup. Uh, really nice lopy cams that I have from Delta camshafts. So um, that's Delta camshaft shirt. So I want to give it another heat cycle. Basically, when you do a heat cycle on the engine, it can vary from, you know, a few minutes idling, making sure that everything's okay to getting the car up to operating temperature with an elevated idle. Sometimes you do it around 2000 RPMs just so you can get everything lubricated. If there's any debris inside of the engine, you don't want to go out and beat on the car with this. You want to make sure that it's within a controlled environment like we are right now in the garage. And then after doing the heat cycle once or twice, and typically about two or three times for my personal preference, then I drain out the oil and the transmission and the engine, and then I fill it with the appropriate oil. So in this case, I have some cheap, cheap, cheap Supertech 1030 oil in both the engine and transmission. The transmission isn't, you know, doing its work right now because it doesn't have any load. It's not on the, on the street driving right now. And the engine itself is just basically using that as a quick lubricant that's not going to go through a lot of miles. It's obviously still on jack stands. And we basically just wanted to clean out the engine and uh, make sure that everything is working as it should. Once I give it another heat cycle today, I'll be able to drain that and put some proper fluids in it. A lot of people ask me what I like to run in these cars on the Integra that I have over here, my track car. It's a turbo build. I use BR1, which is a Valvoline oil which actually I think I may have an extra quart right here for to show you guys, yeah. So this is a high zinc solution uh, oil, it's a lubricant. This is a 2050 one. Um, it's not a 2051, it's one that is a 2050. So this is a 2050 oil, VR1. It's good for when you have a, a little extra bearing clearance, you get like a little bit of a thicker oil, uh, but that comes down to engine building and 
a lot of th things go into that. I like to run the 2030 or 2050 onto the Integra. On this, I may just use some off the shelf mobile one full synthetic, but like I said, we have the cheap stuff in it right now just to get it cleaned up. Uh, right now I'm gonna give it another cold start. Like I said, I don't have the alternator belt on, so I have the battery charging at the moment. Just with a little battery charger. Then we'll be able to give it another start, let it warm up real quick, drain out the oil, get the new alternator belt. I'm also doing a new filter. I have some cheap filter on the back of the engine right now. I'm gonna be putting an OEM Honda filter, which I run on the Integra. Even a lot of the sports front wheel drive guys, a lot of them run OEM Honda filters. Um, it's an OEM part that works well and people like to use OEM things. I like to use OEM things as well. Without further ado, I'll give it another start, let it idle for a bit, raise the idle a little bit, like 2000, so it can get all the oil where it needs to be, and uh, then we'll drain out all that old fluid. So here is the alternator belt that I'm gonna go return or exchange out right now. And you guys know that I am faithful to my sandals. It's a little bit chillier today, so I'm gonna have some socks, be real ghetto with it. Just gotta close up the garage real quick. And we'll be back in a few minutes, hopefully at the parts store with the correct belt. I like using this mixed with engine oil as a transmission. Unless you have like M factory components or anything, these are really good. Uh, with M factory stuff, I really like the M factory graded Torco. But for OEM stuff, Penn's oil, Synchro Match works perfectly. Uh, so 31 to 32. All right, so I got the belt from Advanced. It was one inch longer and it cost about $8 more. So I went from a 31 inch to a 32 inch belt apparently and $8 more, that's crazy. Anyways, it's a belt, you know, you gotta spend the money. Uh, it's not something you can get around, so you know, it is what it is. I also got a couple quarts of the Synchro Mesh stuff, the uh, Pennzoil. So what I like to do, I briefly talked about it advanced, I like to mix that with uh, motor oil since if you guys don't know the OEM Honda uh, manual transmission fluid is basically the same manual transmission fluid used for like the last 20 or 30 years like the formula they use or whatever and uh, it's basically just motor oil uh, I believe actually they used to call for motor oil before they switched over to the MTF or whatever they want to call it I feel that in my personal experience having tried out a whole bunch of different fluids uh, a combination of the synchro mesh and the motor oil together is my best bet for uh, just like a regular synchro engaged transmission. That's my personal opinion. It could have been wrong for other people's opinions and their experiences, but for myself, that's what works. Um, like I said, if you have an M factory differential or cuff or this, that, and another, and it calls for a specific fluid, then most definitely that fluid is what you should use. For example, in the Integra, um, it's still a synchronized, uh, synchronizer engaged transmission, the one for the, uh, the drag car. But I have an M factory differential. I have an M factory long first gear, M factory uh, fifth gear cuff. And when I tried using the synchro mesh, the stuff that I just bought right here, um, it, it would be hit or miss. Sometimes it would work great. Sometimes it would lock me out of gears. As soon as I switched over to the Torco uh, synchro mesh, or Torco um, M factory specific, um, transmission fluid the transmission was just butter it was it worked perfectly and that goes to show you like the importance of certain fluids within your car when you're racing them now when it came to the car being off and you could shift all the gears it would be fine with the regular synchro mesh in our case at home right now with the transmission it has cheap motor oil just to shift it fine but i'm not racing it yet now that we're getting it ready for that kind of stuff is when we switch over to the fluid that we're actually going to be needing to use for the racing and uh, right now i'm just kind of rambling but i'm going to walmart at the moment because although advanced parts advanced auto parts has a whole bunch of good you know prices and whatnot when it comes to motor oil mobile one specifically they normally charge about like 35 bucks for a five quart thing walmart has it about 25 bucks normally um for about five quarts sometimes it even goes on sale for like 20 dollars even so it's a big difference and it's literally a mile down the road uh on the way home so i'm definitely gonna stop by right here get some more oil uh that way we can top off the engine with fresh oil instead of the braking oil afterwards later today and uh, put a fresh um, oil filter on as well so pulling up here, maybe we'll even see Max. You guys know I always run into Max on my Walmart runs. So, uh, yeah. Hey! What's up, CJ? I don't know if you guys just caught 
CJ. Ah, that guy is mad at me because he had a stop sign and I won anyway. But uh, that was CJ back there in his uh, CRV. Run some 1030. And they restocked on the brakes parts cleaner. So for 198, 198, I'll get a couple more things of brake cleaner and restock up since they normally sell out pretty quick here and at the parts store, it's like $3 for a brakes part cleaner. So I'll get a couple of these. All right, so I have the alternator belt on. Just from the looks of it, even with a 32 inch belt, uh, this should normally be about that long or that far back on the adjustment but it works, I mean, it's on there with good tension. So I wonder if the OEM belt is actually like a 32 and a half or 33. I'm not sure, if you guys know, drop an input down in the comment section below. Uh, that's just basically what I was working off of the part numbers in Advanced Auto Parts. But it should be good, the battery is charging right now, so I'm gonna disconnect it from the charger since we can now charge off the alternator. And uh, yeah, I'll give it a little startup, warm it up a little bit, and uh, you know, just go from there. So as you notice right there, I have the throttle cable off of a different car. This actually isn't the throttle cable for CRX, so the pedal isn't gonna hook up to it. So unfortunately I can't have it to the pedal. I was just raising the idle a little bit. I can mess with the idle screw a little bit and uh, kind of get the idle where I want it to or disconnect the vacuum line and have the idle good or elevated just for the time being. But being that the car isn't tuned yet, it's just basically on a startup base map uh, just to get it onto the break-in mode and everything from the idle. I don't want to adjust the idle to this specific tune. I want to adjust the idle once the car is tuned to how it's going to be running. Um, so for the time being, that's just how I'm going to accelerate it a little bit. The car, the engine is actually pretty hot uh, in the sense that it's up to operating temperature. Both the top and bottom radiator hose have got to operating temperature on the water side, meaning that the thermostat has already opened. So in that sense, the car has gone through a slight heat cycle, fed it on for like 10 minutes or five or 10 minutes. So it's already got into, you know, oil going through the filter and everything. Uh, while it's hot, so the oil is a lot thinner, I'm gonna drain out the oil, basically get it prepped for once I get the new oil in there, as well as the transmission oil. I wanna get that out as well while it's already circulated and everything. Then I'll leave the plugs off for a little bit, the drain plugs, that way it can drip out everything in there and we can fill it with some fresh fluids. It's always a good idea that when you're draining, especially with a fresh engine build, the oil, uh, you have a clean pan, that way you can look for any debris that may have come off. If you had maybe the wrong bearing clearances and you didn't realize until now, you may have some foreign metal material or something. Obviously we're pretty clean right now, so there's no issues. You can also run the uh, oil coming out through maybe a little cloth to see if it picks up anything. Um, that's also a pretty good tip. Right now I'm draining the engine oil. I'll move over to the transmission side and drain that into the same, same pan as well and uh, then we'll be able to top off with fresh fluids. So earlier in the video, I showed you the VR1 for the Integra. 
And also what we were talking about at the parts store or leaving the parts store, this is the Torco MTF fluid, the manual transmission fluid that I use in the Integra. Uh, like I mentioned, Torco is a really good company. It does a really great product. And this specifically is made for formulators for use with Synchrotech and M factory driveline components. M factory and Synchrotech. So this is specially formulated for those companies and their types of components and the way that they construct everything and the way that uh, the gearing is uh, produced, like the metal type and the chemical composition that it needs to be happy. That's specifically what I use. And it is insane to see the night and day difference between using that fluid versus the fluid that was in it before. It helps so much. Like I was saying earlier, for this specific setup, an OEM style uh, transmission, Synchrotech, I've never had a problem with it. And if by any chance we do have a problem with it, we can always switch it up. It's as easy as draining it out of the side of the transmission. Real easy. What's up, man? What we got here, nice little package. I'm not gonna show you guys this stuff right here. So I will open it upside down. Pretty cool, I was setting up uh, some stuff for a thumbnail and uh, UPS came through, what's up UPS? So without further ado, I'm just gonna set this right here, open this up. Packaging all nice. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. This is exactly what I thought. Oh my god. Look at this beautiful piece right here. So what else we got? We got some hardware probably. A little mounting bracket. We have none other than probably what I think is the best battery box that you can get especially for these EF and CRX chassis. This right here is the battery mount box by Hush Performance. If you guys uh, follow me on Instagram, you know that I had posted a couple days ago, it might've been maybe like a week or two ago, that I located the battery right up here. And I did it actually really ghetto. I have a, a ratchet strap right there for the time being. I also have a battery tie down. And I made this little bracket, but it only supports part of the, the battery. I mean, it works, but in all honesty, it is really ghetto. So uh, Hush Performance actually saw that. They reached out to me and said, hey man, we really wanna send you out a battery box. So this is such a beautiful piece. Oh my God, I'm gonna love this on the build. Huge thank you to Hush Performance. I'm gonna link down in the description below where you can actually find this battery box. And this actually uses the battery off of uh, uh, an aftermarket battery company, Odyssey. I believe it's the PC680, which is the type of battery that you use with this specific mount kit. Obviously at the moment I still have like an OEM style 51R if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the 51R you can kind of see right there. OEM style battery, which is a little too big for that. So I'm gonna keep this for the time being, but I will be buying a PC680 battery to run with this specific box. And then we'll actually be able to have the proper way of mounting this battery without uh, you know, having all the issues of worrying if the battery is not gonna be track approved or you know this, that, and another. So huge thank you to Hush Performance. Like I said, I'm gonna link down in the description to uh, the battery box information and uh, we'll be able to go from there in the next couple of weeks maybe. I'll probably order the battery that I need and get everything situated how it should be. Back to the oil change on this. As I mentioned earlier, I have a brand new Honda filter from Honda themselves. And it also comes with a little crush washer. It's crucial to change the crush washer on these. Uh, you can get away with reusing the same one a couple times. I am a big fan of always changing it because you get a, a perfect leak-free seal and you ensure that if you ever do find anything under the car, you can you know kind of make sure that it's not from that point and you don't have to chase your tail looking for a specific leak. Um, so that's just like one thing to take out of the equation. And it's also good to have a well-sealed engine. You never want to have a leak where you can avoid it. And I think Honda sells it for, I think, 30 cents more, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to throw the filter on and uh, put the new crush washer onto the drain plug. Then we can fill it up with some new oil, do the exact same thing, a new crush washer for the drain of the transmission, and then fill up the transmission with the corresponding fluids as well. Got the old crush washer taken off. And this is still an OEM drain plug. I really should go with a magnetic style. That way, if there is any debris in the oil, uh, this will catch it before 
But uh, I'm probably gonna do this oil change, run it for a little bit, and then I'll get the magnetic one. If you're watching this at home, most definitely get the magnetic one instead of skipping the stuff like I am. Do as I say, don't do as I do. So it's always good when you're using a brand new oil filter to put just a tad of oil on the uh, seal right here. That way it doesn't like dry, get stuck or seized with anything. It goes on nice and uh, smooth. And I also like to put a little bit of oil in the filter itself. For filters that go onto the car like this and thread on, you normally fill it all the way. For cars that like this go onto the block sideways, I put about, you know, half of the contents in here just so it can already have some in the filter during first startup. Another thing is when you do end up starting the car after the oil change, you wanna crank it over a little bit with the fuel and the spark disconnected. That way you can just get some of the oil pressure back up to where it needs to be. So without further ado, I'll put some oil on here and throw it on the car. Whew, sometimes it's a little tough, so you gotta put on the gloves. Got some good grip. Goes the new filter. Now I might not be Shane, but I can still pour some oil. Shane's over here, poor bay. I'm over here, see if I can make it. Oh, woo, bad, bad, so bad. Should've used the funnel. Oil everywhere, God. So bad. Terrible. I got it all over the side. I already had a rag there just in case. I got a little back there, a little in the front. Ugh. I'm gonna have to call Shane or Alfonso to pour my oil next time because I suck at that without a funnel. I didn't want to cheat. I could have used this funnel right here, but I want it to look cool for the video or whatever. All right, well, anyways, after failing on pouring the engine oil, I always like to uh, pour the transmission oil from the VSS area, so I remove the vehicle speed sensor. And there is that hole right up there, hole right there. Basically, I got either a long funnel or what you can do also is just get a regular funnel and essentially hook it up to a line like that. I use this line right here, it's a little bit shorter. Uh, that way you just pour directly into it without any mess uh, and then to get the right measurement, you either do by the quartz, you can measure it, or if the car is level, then you will open, sorry, everything's shaking right now, this port right by the axle, you open that up, and when it starts dripping out the side is when you have reached the proper level, according to Honda. So I'm gonna start filling that up, I'm gonna put the synchro mesh, then I'll put a little bit of engine oil because I mix it together, and uh, yeah, th that'll be basically the solution that I'm using for this. No real possibility for error on this one. Straight into the funnel. So now that we see it starts leaking from the bottom, uh, from that plug that we took off, little 17 millimeter bolt with a washer. Once that starts leaking, you know that it's at the correct level. Pretty self-explanatory, pretty, pretty, easy to uh, judge. All right, so the vehicle speed sensor is back in, the oil filter is tight, the engine is primed with the oil. If you don't really know how to do that, I explained it in the last video, getting the car running, or second to last video, on um, when we did the first startup for the CRX, I went in depth on doing that. Transmission oil is full, trans oh, engine oil is full, everything is ready to start up right now. Uh, that does pretty much sum up the video. I just wanna say thank you to Hush Performance again for sending out that battery box. We're gonna be installing that in the next couple of weeks once we get the Odyssey uh, battery so we can actually have it all correctly. And uh, before we go, I just wanna do a little quick startup for you guys because I personally am in love with the cams and in love with the idle of it. And I'm sure that you guys like the sound of it too. So without further ado, gonna start it up one last time and end out the video from there. <laughs> 